Hello you six beasts, welcome back to War Thunder. April Fools has come and gone and this year's events were quite amazing. I've been reading the comments on my latest music video and I'm glad that you guys really seem to enjoy both the Tomb Planes and what I like to call Thunderpunk 2077. Over this Easter break I've been uh, quite busy with some other stuff instead. Um, secret stuff. I was really excited to see the uh, UCAV Wyvern coming to the game and I immediately had my head full with ideas of what to do with it. I hope you liked that little Ace Combat 7 spoof in the intro. Now, in this video I'm going to show you some stuff you won't see anywhere else. As some of you might be aware, I do actually work for Gaijin, apart from being a content creator still, and so I was able to pull some strings to fly this thing out in uh, custom battles. No easter egg this time, I'm afraid. There sadly is no way for you to get access to it. The Viper is already pretty good in the context of the event itself, but it's quite hard to get decent playtime in it due to the um, spawn point costs and the omnipresence of the completely overpowered Harpy SPAA systems. I wanted to see what this thing can really do against the vehicles we currently have in the game. And this is a combat drone, and as such it has no pilot. You can't get pilot sniped and you cannot black out from overg either, which makes it very good at sustained dogfights. It doesn't have any guns or flares, but it does have access to three all aspect missile types. The missile you can carry the most of is the ATGM. This missile is able to lock both onto ground, air and naval targets. It has a decent range of around 6 kilometers, can attend lock way off the direction of your flight, and has an extremely quick lock making it very easy to spam a bunch of missiles into one or multiple enemies. It supposedly only does Mark 0.9 and pulls 10 G, so it is rather easy for planes to evade them if they are aware. It also does not have an airburst mode as far as I'm aware and requires direct hits to kill the enemy. All of that is easily <laughs> offset by the pure spammability of it. The next missile type is the dedicated AAM. This is basically what our current top tier missiles would look like if they could also lock on from the front. Almost Mach 2, 30G load limits, these are very hard for the enemy to dodge. That said, they are definitely not impossible to dodge. I've had a few dogfights where they failed me. Finally, <laughs> the one that I have been having the most fun with, the cruise missile. This is basically a mini Tomahawk missile with a massive high explosive payload. It can either lock onto an enemy and have it guide itself, or you can guide it manually towards a target like a TV missile. It is not very maneuverable at all, but it has quite a long range if you keep it flying straight. The impact is absolutely devastating. Planes require a direct hit, but are um, conveniently disassembled into their individual components. Tanks are killed even by near misses. And even ships are absolutely devastated by these. I have on some occasions been able to one-shot full health Yuga class battleships. Although it's not very reliable against battleships in general. That said, even if it doesn't one-shot them, the cruise missiles create such massive holes in their hull that they simply sink a few seconds later if they don't have max cruise. Anything larger than a light cruise would just get sunk in a single hit. Sometimes I even broke them in two, it's, it's honestly scary. The Vyvern doesn't have any kind of radar, but it does have third-person thermal view. It's generally not very useful in customs as the smoke of every plane wreck for the duration of the match stays on the map and blocks the vision, but it makes it very easy to spot planes that are firing their guns or launching missiles at a distance. Maneuverability is quite high, even with a full payload you can still pull 14G comfortably. At higher speeds the current Totti jets do have a sharper turn in, but the Vyvern is able to maintain its energy for a much longer time and has better stall characteristics as well as amazing air brakes and combat flaps that don't rip. A 1 vs 1 that absolutely destroys everything but the most skilled of MiG-21 BIS pilots. And even multiple enemies can be taken on with um, some skillful dancing and uh, generous use of the spam fire hit gems. The main issue really is the lack of guns or flares. At close range it's really hard to get the hit gems on target. And the AAMs have such a long warm-up time and lack of off-bore side lock-on capabilities that it just becomes a harmless fireworks show. 
At medium to high speeds, it does have the ability to outturn even the best of enemy missiles, but eventually you will run out of energy and are left with no defenses. I am guessing that at this point some of you are asking what the point of this exactly is. Of course an advanced combat drone from 2077 is going to be better than anything we currently have in the game. Why are you telling us what we already know? Ah, see. You're not thinking far enough ahead. It's no secret that next-gen jets are eventually coming to the game. As well as more and more advanced weaponry. We already have all aspect air missiles on helicopters, self-guiding AT gems with the AGM-65 Maverick, and we even have anti-ship missiles on certain boats. The Wyvern just so happens to combine everything into one very versatile platform. It does make you think, what will top tier combat look like over the next few years? All aspect missiles for jets are going to be a quite a game changer. Though, if anything, the UCAV does prove that they are not a guaranteed kill weapon. I also have to wonder if we'll ever see something similar to the ATGMs, something that is a quick lock and is able to be launched in quick succession, but with a lower hit chance. It will become an action-packed mind game of uh, deciding which missile to use in what situation. And that was honestly the most fun part about this whole experiment. More advanced versions of the Maverick missile are going to be absolutely devastating against tanks. Tanks can't really dodge missiles, the only real way they have of doing anything against these would be introduction of hard kill APS like we actually saw in some of the uh, 2077 tanks. I am quite afraid of top tier ground battles just becoming more and more dominated by increasingly deadly ordnance mounted on increasingly advanced aircraft. And this isn't even accounting for the cruise missiles. These are incredibly scary weapons. Imagine taking a big bomb and being able to guide it pinpoint accurately into a cluster of enemies from about 10 kilometers away. Oh, and don't even get me started on what is going to happen to ships. I can see some more advanced ships having some chance to defend themselves with um, sieves. This has already been introduced on the uh, Baku Hilly Carrier. But anything larger than the battleship without sieves is, excuse the pun, dead in the water. I think it's quite fun to theorize, so I invite you to tell me your predictions in the comments below. And most importantly, tell me what you would do for a clon- uh, uh, I mean a UCAV in the hangar. In the meantime, enjoy some more drone montage. <laughs>